The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we have some good news today. We have our good friend Stan Harley is going to be our guest from Stan Harley Stock Market Cycles. He'll be on the air. Uh, the first chart that I've posted in here this morning is the usual startup chart of the DAX on the hourly chart. As you can see, the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, actually ran the old DAX market yesterday because right on the bottom is when the news came out about uh, uh, Amazon's uh, blockbuster earning. And then we – no, he I don't think so. No, he doesn't. He doesn't try to <laughs> – no, anyway, it was Harley and a Davidson. There was two guys. Anyway uh, – the uh, main thing, you got me off my, th my thought process, but it doesn't take a whole lot. Let me think now what I was talking about. Um, anyway, Stan Harley will be our guest uh, at the break, but you'll see that the DAX, uh, you know, really took off right when the Amazon thing happened. The, the um, uh, NASDAQ 100 has moved 100 points since the, uh, NAS since the uh, Amazon uh, earnings came out. And of course, we had Google, which was Blockbuster, and then they had Microsoft, which was also big. So there's a big one run there. Um, the Dow didn't do too much. It was only up about 30 or 40 at one time. The S&P up about 6 or 7, but the NASDAQ is the ruler of the roost today, and that's the choup du jour. So we'll watch what happens. Let's take a quick look here at Amazon on a really long long-term basis, folks. Uh, this is going back over the last six years. Uh, we had a really nice three drive to a, a top pattern up there at that almost 1100 area. We came down to a 382 retracement, just like we've been doing ever since 2016. Uh, we're now trading about $4 above the 78% retracement of that last move. Uh, Google has gone into new high ground. Uh, by a bit, but uh, the a Amazon hasn't, but it probably will this morning uh, if it gets above the uh, 1100 area, which certainly could. But that is a, a three drive pattern and it certainly could fail. But we'll uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. I think the thing that we have to pay really close attention to today, there's three markets that mean, need our attention. One is the, uh, the dollar index, i.e. the euro, the pound, all these others. Uh, you know, we had this break in the euro and it's continued to break. And one one of the things we focused on in the newsletter this past week was the fact that the dollar index had such a bullish bias, i.e. a bearish euro. And as you can see here, uh, we were looking for a target up around 95 uh, in the dollar index. Now, I don't know where the dollar, where the, excuse me one second. I don't know where the dollar index is trading right now, but uh, it has a target of around 95. So if someone's kind enough to give me a reading on that, I would certainly appreciate it. Uh, we've broken down uh, pretty badly uh, in the euros. Uh, you know, uh, I thought it was going to hold 116. Um, 116.85. I gave him my 30 pips and, and uh, left. I took a little bit on the short side last night, but 94.99, that's getting pretty close. So we ought to be really close to that dollar index. But the problem is you've got this really wide ranging bars now. You've got two of them. And that's a that's a very near, in fact, it's a Friday. So I would really, uh, I'd really be able to see if that's going to be the case. Uh, Mr. Uh, Peak, you're talking about possible island reversal in some of these NASDAQ stocks. Uh, if that's going to be the case, they better close on the lower part of the range. In other words, make sure that if they have a big run up, make sure they close right near the low of the day with a, still a gap. And then you know exactly what your risk is. And if they open higher on Monday, uh, it's not an island, so uh, that's one way to play that. But if it's right, you know, you get a big Cupid doll. If you're wrong, you get a little small, uh, little egg white on your face, but uh, that happens all the time. But make sure if you're going to do something like that, that you do it if they close near the – wait till the close, and if they close near the low of the day, you know, that's pretty uh, pretty good. Steve uh, Rhodes has put a really good uh, write-up here about the hanging man uh, pattern, which is basically uh, an island reversal setup. 
and the fact that they don't work. Once in a while, they do work. But, you know, like the last seven, I believe he said, you know, did not work. So just make sure, because the only thing you can control is your risk. You're taking a calculated, uh, you know, risk. First of all, the market is certainly overbought. But you got to make sure that it closes in the absolute low of the range. I mean, just right near the low of the day, still up on the day with a gap. And then you've got uh, something that... Um, you know, looks uh, really, you know, really interesting. So that's uh, the main thing, uh, you know, to sort of keep an eye on because I, I think that's the, another one that's very important. Um, the other one that we want to look at here is uh, this is this uh, euro, excuse me one second here, and this this goes in, in, in step with what we've been talking about with the U.S. dollar because we're following these currencies. If you look at the uh, Japanese yen here on the last uh, 10 days, you'll notice that we're making a three drive pattern up here at this uh, 114.40 level, 114.36. That's the ABCD structure, the 1.27, and so far we've hit 114.40. 40 this morning so that has lined up you know pretty nicely and if you look at this which we've we've done this almost every day this week one second <clears throat> what we've done this every day this week is to look at this uh Japanese yen on the daily. This is the third time now that we've tested this real important level in the Japanese yen. So frankly, I think that we're probably getting ready to see uh you know some type of a at least a short term uh, a break in the in the not a break a, a a relief in the in the U.S. dollar. Remember, you know when was it 120? Everybody wanted it. Now it's 115, and nobody likes it. I mean that's uh, <laughs> you know, that's what you're looking at here. So just be uh, just be aware that that's what's uh, that's what's going on. If you look at this, I'll 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 post the uh, Japanese in here. Uh, well, I can't do that because that chart is not valid anymore because it was from three days ago. What happened to the other charts? All right, let's get back to, since we're talking about currencies, let's look here at the uh, the gold market. Um, this is what we're watching here. Uh, I believe we're down around 12. I don't know what the last low in gold was, but I think we're going to get down here sometime. This is a Friday in a down week, so I don't think you're going to get a lot of people buying gold unless there's a big type of reversal here. But you'll see we have this, those two big ABCD patterns we've been waiting for. They come in around 1250. Now, over the weekend, I'm going to do a lot of work for the newsletter to do the weekly charts and the and the longer term daily charts, and you know to find out where we are with silver and with gold, and we'll see if we can uh, be able to uh, come up with something that looks uh, you know relatively interesting, you know from a uh, trade setup for for long gold if we can, because uh, people are getting very bearish to stuff now, and that's uh, what we've been waiting for is this pattern completing, and it is completing, so we want to take a good look at it. I want to share with you another market that uh, uh, may, makes, well, I'm, there's several others before we get to Stan Harley, but when we come back from the break, I want to get back with you and talk to you about the uh, market for the uh, uh, the NASDAQ, what it's doing on a shorter term basis again. Anyway, uh, let's just take a look here uh, at this one last chart here on gold. This is a 15-minute chart, but I don't think it's going to, it's, it's good. Ah, 10-4, over and out. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, we're back, and I posted the chart of the NASDAQ over the last several days just to show you there's some shorter-term patterns that are there, but there's two uh, 1.618 expansions that are coming in pretty much where we're, we're trading at right now at that uh, 61, uh, 38 level. Um, the one other market that I wanted to talk about that we don't talk about here very often is the um, Nikkei Dow. Uh, it, it is doing something very, very historical uh, and uh, unusual technically that it's been up uh, 18 of the last 19 days. Uh, this is the uh, weekly chart, excuse me, the daily chart that you're seeing here that uh, we've had this, uh, you know, really a big move. Uh, and also that is a, a minor three drive pattern. But that's not the important thing that I wanted to talk to you about. It's mainly what was really happening here. This is the, the Dow Jones. Gosh darn, Larry, let's get this right. This is the uh, Nikkei Dow on the weekly chart. Let's try it again, Larry. This is the Nikkei. It's <laughs> how do you spell resign? R E I Z N E. Anyway, look at the Nikkei Dow on the monthly chart here. Uh, the high on the Dow on the Nikkei Dow was on uh, December uh, the 30th of 1989. That was two years after the crash of 87. It went down a little bit during the crash of 87, but continued up, you know, for two years. And then it went all the way down, went from 39,000 folks all the way down to uh, 6,400. 6, uh, back in that area, you'll notice that it bottomed uh, right at the same time uh, that we were bottoming in our markets. That was March of uh, 2009. And now you'll notice that we've had this big move here and we bopped up on the upside. But just calculate what the 382 retracement on this is, folks. <laughs> this is still a bear market, but it's still going up. And of course, there could be some ABCD moves in here that would make it go even higher. But the Japanese government is the biggest buyer 
uh, of the stocks there. So you're, if you're fading that, you're fading the government, and that's always a hard one to uh, uh, to, to take a look at. So let's let's you know, I, I don't trade that anymore. Um, just too many other things that are too much fun to trade. So just keep an eye on it. What uh, what we're watching here. Let's get back to the things that uh, really you know are interesting to us. And that is, uh, let's just get to this euro because I, I wanted to, to show the euro where it broke down from because it was really important here. Because when these 1.618, uh, uh, oh, yeah, I want to mention that too. At the, the 1.618 expansion here that came in at that 1670, you notice that that failed. And then we dropped 100 pips below that. That's why you only want to risk 30 pips when you're going to be do that. Someone's in the room mentioning about JFK, the files that are coming out. Folks, I, I, I'm not big on conspiracy theories, but I can tell you this. In 1960, I bought uh, from American Rifleman, which later became Shotgun News, I believe, uh, one of those Manlicker Cocano's uh, Italian rifles. It was a Mauser. Uh, just exactly, it was the same gun that uh, used to kill the president, and uh, they were for sale for 1995. Folks, that is the most. It was the worthless, most worthless gun I ever had in my life. Uh, the bolt action on it was uh, it was a knockoff of a Mauser, and when you put the bullet in, when the bullet came up, it actually wiggled into the barrel. I mean, it was you couldn't hit a barn if you were standing 30 feet from the barn, let alone hit a a moving car. And well, anyway, anyway, I just don't believe that that gun was the gun that shot him but you know um, what do I know I still don't believe color TVs are here well I believe color TVs are here to say but microwave ovens maybe not so anyway Let's uh, let's forget all about that. We'll never know the real reason. You know that. Just like they'll never know where Jimmy Hoffa is buried. You know, we, we just won't know those things. Anyway, let's move on to the other thing, and uh, we'll say uh, we'll see what's going on. Okay, we're going to have Stan Harley here as our guest. I wish he was coming sooner, so I wouldn't make any more mistakes than I'm doing at right now. Uh, we have to take a quick look here uh, at Tesla here for just a second because this market uh, is acting rather uh, rather bearish compared to all the others. And uh, we'll see, uh, you know, how this thing ends up here. But uh, we did get up to that 360 level. We're now trading at, uh, we're below the, uh, the the B point. So we're heading towards the uh, 310 level, 309 level. We're trading at 322 in Tesla now. So it does look like it is getting ready to, uh, you know, go a little bit lower. And then we'll see. Uh, see what's going on uh, with that stuff. You know, the folks, the stuff that's in the news, you can't believe anything anymore from anybody. Uh, I don't I don't know how they, how they, well, it's all advertising and stuff, but it's just truly amazing to me that that's, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. Twentyman told me that uh, the other day that, uh, that Harvey Weinstein was one of the customers that Drexel had uh, many, many years ago. Uh, I don't remember that, but Jim said he did. So I guess that was it. We'll take a look. A uh, copper, copper. Yeah, I, I do. I will po post the copper. You know, we had that big move up there, uh, which was the very, very big ABCDs in copper. But I'll have to post that uh, during the break because I can't get the charts up and talk at the same time. But uh, copper has had a, a pretty good sell off. We've had a lot of sell offs in some of the uh, the the commodities, folks. Other than the livestock, a lot of this stuff is uh, is going going down. I mean, it's uh, you know it's not indicative of uh, you know bull markets everywhere, but you know that maybe to catch up a little bit later. All I know is, folks, the open interest in this uh, Nasdaq is dropping. It ain't going up. So there's a lot of the stores open, but there are not a lot of customers in there. So when it's over, and I don't know when it's over, there's going to be a vacuum under that puppy, and uh, just don't. Uh, don't get caught by it because that's what happened in gold and silver and all these others. Because if you don't have players coming in, it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough. So we'll see uh, we'll see what uh, see what's going to. <laughs> you guys, you guys are uh, you guys are a little bit off base here in the room today. You're getting a little too funny. It's hard to do this show when I tried to read the comments. If you have any questions, I want to post a chart here for the uh, Dow Jones E Mini because it is lagging a little bit. Uh, we'll pull this up so you can take a look at it, and you'll see here. Uh, that we've had these really nice swings since October 18th when we got up to 23,440. We backed off on the day where we gapped down, which was uh, on the uh, 25th. And then for the last three days, we've been rallying. Well, last four days, we got up to the 78% retracement again last night. Uh, remember that the, the NASDAQ has blasted through and gone through the 1.618. So all of that 
tells us that that uh, you know, market is a little bit weaker than the rest. And the S&P also got uh, just a tiny bit above the 78% level and uh, is still holding, uh, still holding its own when we come up here for the opening, which won't be, uh, won't, which won't be too long uh, in coming. Um, anyway, the, the other one, the, the bonds are still holding that magical level of 50, and boy, they better hold it because if they if they break below that, that's going to be that's going to be uh, uh, not a good sign. So uh, we're looking at this. You, you see that little red box there where the ABCD completes right near the 61% retracement. That was the low at 150.15, and so far that is held. And we're only trading just a little above that, but uh, it's basically saying that it's, it's such an important number because we've been there now for three days. So that should make it very important. We're going to have Stan Harley uh, as our guest here when we uh, uh, come back from the show. He'll give us some good ideas of what we're looking at, and we'll, we'll keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, from these levels. So we'll watch it real closely this morning. We want to be looking to buy gold probably on Monday would be my guess. So we'll wait. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender platinum grains crude oil gold copper cattle hogs gasoline natural gas coffee cotton cocoa and sugar these are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of andy hecht's techno mental commodity report Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley of the Stan Harley Stock Market Letter on the line. Stan, are you there? 
Good morning, Larry. Good morning to you, my friend. We have a question right off the bat, and that is uh, from one of our listeners. He is asking a question. How can you make a forecast uh, more than a, a couple years out uh, in the market using cycles? Well, uh, well, one has to look at long-term cycles, and that's what I do. I look at yearly cycles. Uh, I've got data going back to the 1600s, and what I do is uh, look at high and low pivot points, going back mm -hmm. many, many years, and I'm able to use that information All to right. project into the future. Okay, that makes pretty good sense. And you do a great deal of historical work, as I recall. I, I endeavored to do just that, Larry. Yes, I did. Okay. All right, the first chart that we're going to bring up for you, Stan, is the, uh, the one that, hold on one second here so I can get it ready here. I'm getting bring it up right now. This is the uh, S&P weekly chart where you're looking at the 89 and the 55-week cycles. You want to go through that for us, please? Uh, absolutely. I've looked at the, uh, the weekly data for the stock market with the S&P 500 in particular, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the chart that you and I are looking at right now starts at the February 11th, 2016 low. That was a major, major bottom. It was what I call a four-year cycle bottom in the uh -huh. stock market. And if we count forward in time, Fibonacci counts of, say, 50, 55 weeks, 89 weeks, and so on. 55 weeks from that low, Larry, lined up exactly with the March 1st high of, uh, of this year. Okay. And we, under, and we underwent an inter modest but intermediate decline nonetheless. Now, if you go to the next Fibonacci number in the series, that's 89. That lines up with, drum roll, this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Fibonacci counts, and, and you're a Fibonacci theorist, as, as, as everyone well knows. Uh, they often, not always, but often define turning points, pivot points in the markets, either highs or lows. And I find that Fibonacci is perhaps less useful on the daily chart, but very, very useful on the weekly charts. Yeah, so, this answers this answers the question that the gentleman asked. How do you go out and make these forecasts? It's just the way you do it because you've already gone out three years here when you get to 144 weeks. Well, yes, and and so I can't say with absolute certainty at the 89 week count plus or minus two to three weeks, we're going to make a reversal. I look at I look at the body of evidence, but this is just one uh -huh. thing that is in my toolkit right now, and it's highly suggestive of the potential, the potential for a high occurring this week, plus or minus a week or two. And, and then, by the way, on that same chart, I also show the 144-week count from the February 2016 bottom, and that lines up with the week ending November 16, 2018, a little over a year from now. And it's my belief right now uh, that that will mark what I call a four-year cycle top in the market, so November of next year. Okay, that makes that makes really good sense. Now we have another question, uh, and that is, uh, do you have any work that suggests where the price level would be with these cycles? Uh, what cycles allow us to do is forecast what's going to happen on the x-axis, i.e., time. They don't sure. give us any indication of what's going to happen on the y-axis. So what I do there. Uh, it's it's a little bit more challenging, but I just look at the structure, I look at the pattern, and if I have a pretty good idea in time, that is to say on the x-axis of the chart where I think is a, a high might occur, I will assume, and it might be a false assumption, but I will assume that the slope over the last, say, couple of years will be generally the same and just draw a straight mm -hmm. line. And I have a few other things I use, GAN angles, Fibonacci retracements, um, it, that that helps, but... But at the back of the envelope math, I just look at the structure and assume the slope is going to be very similar. Okay, that using common sense. That's always a good tool. Yes, yes. So, uh, we have a, a question from me that I have a question. I think I've asked you this before, but uh, I can't remember what the answer was. Uh, do you ever use these FLDs, these future lines of demarcation that Steve or uh, uh, Peter Lides used uh, uh, quite a bit to forecast price? That was in the Hearst book. I, I don't know if you worked on that or not, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very familiar with with uh, uh, Hearst's work. Uh, Peter, great man, uh, excellent yeah. technician. I've known him for years. Uh, he spoke several times at uh, the market analyst, analyst of Southern California when I was the president of that group out here in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, he he does a thing called offset with his cycles, and uh, I I don't 
uh, I don't do exactly what he does, and, and quite honestly, I can't speak very well to precisely what he does. My, my work is a little bit different than Peter's. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes good sense. You know, Peter is, lives up in Santa Rosa, and uh, fortunately, he was able to uh, get, not get hit by the fire, which was good. So, oh, oh, anyway, the fires up there were just horrendous. Yeah, oh. he actually lives in an area that was a little isolated, so he was okay. Anyway, the uh, next chart that I wanted to talk about, this is one of my favorite chart, folks. Uh, my good friend Tom Hugard from over in London uh, loves this 93-day uh, cycle that uh, Stan is going to show us here in just a second, and uh, we can discuss this. This is really an accurate cycle, Stan. I mean, this thing really has a, uh, some really good points. Uh, Larry, I've been tracking this for years, and you and I have talked about this on the air, I think just about every time we've been on. It's been, uh, it's been my bread and butter cycle. It has, uh, it has uh, defined... As, as, you, as you can see from the chart, of course, the, the people on the radio can't see it, but if one looks at a, a chart of the stock market going back the last three years, one will see that every single low of importance has been defined by this cycle. Mm -hmm. And it averages right at 93 trading days. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's been short as 90, sometimes it's been as long as 94. I've done a detailed statistical analysis of the data series, and it's right at 93 trading days. Wow. Um, What's interesting here is that uh, the last low, as measured by that cycle, occurred on March 27, 2017. If one counts forward about another 93 trading days, from there you get to roughly the August 2nd time period, and no low of importance occurred there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that suggests, well, either the cycle is doing something funny here, it cycles come and go, as you know. Sure. It could, it could be the cycle is going away, or it could be the cycle is undergoing some type of expansion contraction. And so what I do, if, if a cycle, if I'm expecting a low within a certain time period, if it doesn't occur, then I assume it will un, it's undergoing some kind of expansion. The first application I look at is 1.618. And if that cycle were to expand by a Fibonacci 1.618, uh, Larry, that would take it into the present time frame this week. Uh, well, that October 24th, plus or minus about three days. Okay, I have uh, one other question for one of our listeners, uh, Stan. Uh, you, you have on your chart the 50 and 200-day moving average. Uh, how, how do you use them uh, in, your, in your analysis? Uh, 50 and 200-day moving averages uh, often indicate some measure of support and resistance, and it's something I, I look at very closely. And when it works, great. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But it's, it's like everything else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's a, 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 both of those are very good uh, indicators of trend. And uh, I, I think investors would be wise to take a look at those as well. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back with Stan Harley of the Stan Harley Stock Market Letter. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank. Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. As Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with uh, Stan Harley of the Stan Harley Stock Market Letters. Uh, Stan, you've got a chart here that's uh, very interesting to, to me. I want to post it to our folks. This is the uh, New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. Do you want to tell the folks uh, what we're looking at here, especially with that red arrow that you've got the, that you've got marked here? Yes, Larry. Uh, I, it, it, as, as you might have gathered, I'm uh, highly suspicious we are right in the zone for what I'm calling for an intermediate high in the stock market. We're 89 weeks from the uh, February bottom of last year and also the 93-day cycle uh, with that 1.618 Fibonacci expansion lines up with this week, right around October 23rd, 24th. And so far, that's been the high in the Dow and the S&P. Mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with that, I like to do what I call a take, beneath, uh, take, a, take a little peek beneath the hood, is what I say. Um, kind of like lifting up the hood of your car and looking at the engine and the components inside. Well, I do the same thing with the stock market, and that is I look at market internals, advances and declines, new highs and new lows. Uh, with respect to advances and declines, if one keeps a running summation of the each day's net difference between advances and declines, that constructs a, a line that many technicians are quite familiar with. That's called an advanced decline line. And that just made a new all-time high on October 20th, just a week ago. But one can take that same data and massage it a little bit differently, the same advances and declines, and instead of just maintaining a running summation, uh, compute a, a 10 day and a 30 day simple moving average of that data and plot mm -hmm. it on the graph. And that's what I've done here in this chart. And what this shows is the market has reached an overbought extreme and is now rolling over. And the 10 day component in that measurement of advances and declines is below the 30 day component, and both are trending mm -hmm. southbound. So that suggests wow. to me that. In conjunction with my Fibonacci analysis, my time cycle analysis, the uh, the assessment of uh, advances and declines, mm -hmm. not on a running summation basis, but on a 10-day and 30-day simple moving average basis, is heading lower, and therefore mm -hmm. I believe the market is going to head down. That makes sense. Uh, certainly, it's overbought by any stretch of the imagination. One question that we have um, from one of our, our listeners is, what would be the signal? to tell you that all this has, um, um, you know, starting to play? Would it be a down close or a down weekly close below uh, something? Or do you have a particular signal that you look at to say, yep, this is it, and this is where I go in? And, and the second part of that is how, how much would you risk when, you, when, you were, when you're looking for something like this? All interesting questions and difficult to answer. It, 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 
uh, varies depending on one's uh, temperament and risk management. Uh, for me, I think we're there uh, in, a, in a zone for a high. Uh, but to anyone listening to me, uh, be a skeptic and do your own work, please. Ah, I love that. That's one of my favorite quotes from Jim Twentyman. <laughs> Defy human nature, do the work yourself, and take responsibility. <laughs> ab ab absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I think we're there, and so I think uh, I think we're going to probably head down into about the uh, oh first second week of January. Mm -hmm. um, I'm already getting the indications now, based on the things we have just talked about, that, that the high is in. On the other hand, let's assume I'm I'm wrong. Uh, what would what would be my indicators? Well, the market would have to go higher. Uh, mm -hmm. And if let's say we went higher next week, we broke out to new highs, then uh, mm -hmm. then my my expectations for uh, for an intermediate high right here might be uh, might be a little premature. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if I'm right, how much does one risk? You know, I can't answer that for everyone. Uh, it depends entirely on oh the the type of vehicle one is using, whether you're using stocks, ETFs mm -hmm. with leverage options, futures, it's different for everyone. So there's, there's no way I can answer that question. That makes really good sense. And that, that you really define what trading is all about, is taking responsibility. And you're the one that has to determine, you know, whether you're going to enter a trade and how much you're going to risk. That's for sure. Larry, um, I, I think... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. No, the the question, the, 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 there was a third question is, was does, does the market closing down today, would that have any effect on any of these cycles? No, uh, okay. the while while that's interesting, uh, no, the the close is just is is not uh, not necessarily indicative. Uh, it's just a well, if you look at an hourly chart, for example, uh, and string them all together, uh, the close is just one point in time. It's where the market happened to be at 1 p.m. Pacific time or 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, but no, the, the close is, while it's interesting and maybe it bears some marginal amount of weight in my mind, it's, it's not a biggie. I, I look for the, when, when I'm doing the analysis, I average the high-low close and plug the, that, that computation into my spreadsheet. Okay, that makes that makes really good sense. Um, I know we don't have a chart for the uh, the gold market, but uh, you, you do pretty well in gold, too. What's your feeling on the gold market in here, uh, Stan? I think... I think we've been in a bear market rally. I think uh, the precious metals complex topped out in late uh, 2011, and we're trending down. Uh, we made a significant low in December of last year, uh, ran up fairly sharply, and now we're pulling back again. And this this rally may well have exhausted all of its rocket fuel. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been uh, positive on the metals complex throughout this counter trend rally, but I think. Uh, I think uh, it just might uh, it might well be done. I'm going to be watching the 1250 area basis uh, COMEX goal. Let's see how we do right mm -hmm. in there. If we break significantly below it, then uh, then I think we're probably going to break lower. Ultimately, bear market low. I'm, I'm looking for a break of a thousand. Ultimately, I think we'll go down and test the uh, January 1980 high at 873 and go a little bit lower. So, ultimately, I would look for gold to get down in the 750 area at the final bear market bottom. Wow, that you just scared uh, you just scared the bejeebies out of two thirds of our listeners. <laughs> no, they, they they protect themselves, so we we're we're certainly aware of that. Uh, one other market, we've only got a couple more minutes here, but uh, on the bond market, are we at a major bottom here in bonds? Uh, looking at your cycle work, what do you think? I think so. Yes, I think bonds are going to head higher. I, I'm a long term bond bull, as I am on the stock market. I think we've got about another five years before this thing is ultimately done. Uh, across all asset classes, stock market, bond market, housing market. Yes, I think bonds are uh, right at a good good uh, opportunity for long positions here. TLT, uh, anything below 125 I think is a gift for investors. Um, and I think bonds, yes, are going to trend higher. Okay, that makes very good sense. So how would the folks uh, could get in touch with you if they want to take a look at your letter and stuff? Could you give us some, uh, some feedback here? What I have a website, Larry, that if folks are uh, welcome to take a look at. It's harleymarketletter.com, H-A-R-L-E-Y, marketletter.com. Okay, and so let me have a final question here is, how do you like Arizona so far? Love Arizona. I'm yeah, back well, in the this, this area. is our best, this is the best weather in the world, my friend, right, what we have oh, right I, now. This <laughs> it's, it's perfect. 
<laughs> yeah. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, it really is, and I think you'll enjoy it. But we'll have to get up there to have lunch with you and uh, say hello. I haven't seen you in a very long time, but we certainly used to hang out a lot back in the old days uh, in Southern California when we were all young kids. That's hard to believe it's been this long, isn't it, Stan? Oh, we're still young kids, Larry. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. Uh-huh. I, I, I have, you know, I, well, anyway, let's forget about it. Anyway, we were lucky that we're still alive. A lot of the old guys are not around anymore, but uh, we had a lot of fun. We were learning. Stan Harley, thanks for joining us. We'll have you on again soon. And My pleasure. Uh, really great information. Thanks a lot, Stan. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we are going to uh, end the show. I, 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 fi I find I just my alert went off, folks. I cannot believe that the New York Stock Exchange Index gapped down with the NASDAQ up 73 points. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but this is a different market, so who knows? We'll see what's going on here, but the Dow's down a little bit. The s and still holding its own, but the New York Stock Exchange Index actually gapped down. That's uh, 
That's hard to believe. I uh, I don't even know if that data is right or not. That, uh, that that's how bad that looks. We'll see. The other one is uh, the the crude oil folks. We're getting above the 5300 level. Watch this level very very closely. We brought it to your attention several times here uh, this past week. So watch it closely. 5300 and 12 uh, 18s where we're trading right now. If we close sharply above that, we're on our way to 55 dollars a barrel. But if we reverse up in here, all we've done is get back to retest that 61 percent retracement again just like we did in the Japanese yen that's dropped about 60 pips since we've been here uh, on the air so uh, let's uh, play close attention to that and uh, we want to thank Stan Harley for being our guest today uh, really has some great information and he's number two in the um, running there for market timing again this year he's number one last year so uh, uh, great kudos to him uh, hopefully we're going to have Bill Meridian as our guest next week along with uh, Rich Anderson and then on the fourth of this month uh, next Friday we're going going to have uh, with the full moon we're going to have norm winsky uh, as our guest so we'll have him on also so we'll pay uh, pretty close attention to these things as we uh, as we look at some of these things today but we're trading at uh, 5320 uh, in the crude oil watch that watch the price of 5342 that's the the real key level uh, from uh, what, what I think is it closes above 5342 in the nearby crude that gives you a really good chance of uh, you know seeing the market uh, uh, back off in the crude, but right now it's still positive. I mean the little pullbacks that we've been having have been very minor, usually about 60 or 70 pips, and that's it. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.